Here you are, boys. I can just barely open. Five cents. Now, let's put a little interest in this game, huh? I'm gonna raise that right on up to a dime. Huh. Well, as long as everybody else is feeling reckless, I'll call. Oh, well, uh, I don't have much of a hand, but I ain't gonna be no spoil sport. Uh, what's that bet to me? Ten cents to you, Reese. All right, uh, there's my ten cents, and I'll raise it twenty. Yeah. You're gonna raise it? Twenty cents. Hmm. Well, I gotta look again. Wait a minute. Well, come on, Chad. You in the potter, ain't you? Well, now, don't rush me, Reese. I don't like to be rushed with my cards or my women. <laughs> Could that be why you so seldom win with either? <laughs> you should be so lucky. I hate to interfere with your poker game, but the four of you are on duty. Uh, yes, sir. What is it? I got a telegram from Cap Mormsby in Del Rio. His men arrested Luke Grubbs. Grubbs? I thought he'd gotten away into Mexico. He had, but he made the mistake of coming back. When he was arrested, he was on his way to join a gang that plans to kidnap Emerson Whitby III. Who's, uh, what by, uh... Emerson Whitby III, an eccentric San Francisco millionaire sportsman. He's due in Laredo today. Now, according to Grubbs, they're going to take him off the stage and hold him for ransom. Hmm. Did, uh, Grubbs happen to say who else was in that gang? He claims he doesn't know. He said he was offered so much money he couldn't turn it down. He says nobody in the gang knows who organized the kidnapping. So why all of a sudden does an owl hoot like Grubbs turn so talkative? He hopes to make a deal. When do they mean to stop the stage, Captain? When it reaches the border. Get moving, on the double. Well, well now, Captain, uh, let us just finish this one hand, will you? Reese. Well, all right, Captain. Four kings. <laughs> <laughs> Wasting your time. We ain't carrying no money. Now what's going on out there, driver? Why we stop? He woke me up. Climb up, Mr. Whitby. You're coming with us. Driver, who are these people? Hey, Reese, what are you doing on the stage? I ain't on the stage. I'm the only person in this stage. Emerson Whitby III. And who are you? I'm Eric Hunter. And you? Reese Bennett. You, you sound, sound like, like me! me. seen him, Captain. Chad and Joe was chased them. And if anybody will get him, they will. Well, we lost him. We split up. Uh, well, the important thing is that Mr. Whitby's safe. Yeah. Gentlemen, Mr. Whitby. Whitby? Mr. Whitby. We figured we'd uh, get some fresh mounts, Captain, and then uh, pick up the trail later. Yeah. I'm certainly grateful. And I want to make some suitable provision for the family of that poor shotgun guy. Would you, would you uh, say that again? 
I said I'm grateful, and I... All he said was he wanted to do something with that guard's family. Wants to help him, that's all. That's right. I, I, I can't believe it. Now, if you could direct me to the livery stable, where I can hire someone to take me to the Nicholson Ranch. Frank Nicholson? Frank's been trying to get me to one of his famous poker marathons for years. You mean you came all the way to Laredo just to play in a poker game? No ordinary game. There'll be Frank and myself and, and Virgil Porter the Denver Silver King, Harry Tyson, the so-called Duke of New Orleans, and Sabrina Lane, the lady who's a gambling legend on three continents. Yeah, I've heard about her. Uh, guess them folks play for pretty high stakes, huh? Well, after the last session, Frank wrote me at one half of New Mexico. Uh, a slight exaggeration. It was more like a third. Uh, Mr. Whitby... Do any of the players besides Mr. Nicholson know you personally? Only by reputation. Uh, now, the livery stable? Uh, we'd be glad to take him over there, Captain. Chad and I have to pick up a couple of fresh mounts anyway. Fine. Let's go. Gentlemen. Uh, just a moment, Mr. Whitby. I'm very anxious to get to Frank's place. Well, it may be the most dangerous spot in Texas for you. What do you mean? Who knew you were coming from Mexico to Laredo? Are you suggesting my old friend Frank Nicholson arranged my kidnapping? Oh, the other three who'll be there must have known. Porter's a millionaire, ten times older. Tyson's a, a long-time friend of Frank's. And Sabrina Lane. Why, it's ridiculous to think of any one of these as a criminal. Not an ordinary criminal. Remember, this kidnapping was planned by an unknown boss who hired those outlaws to carry it out. He hired the wrong men. They failed. They just might try again at the Nicholson Ranch. Exactly. The odds are against it. I'll take my chances. They've killed one man. All right. Send the ranger along to protect me. Captain, uh, I'd be happy to go along as Mr. Whitby's bodyguard. Captain, if you send a ranger along as bodyguard, it just figures that those kidnappers aren't going to take any risks. Right again. Now, wouldn't it be better to bring them out in the open by letting it seem that he is unprotected? I won't put Mr. Whitby in jeopardy. Well, that won't be necessary. No one in Laredo knows Mr. Whitby except Mr. Nicholson. And today the kidnappers didn't see him. They only heard his voice. What's your point, Mr. Hunter? Yeah, Eric. What are you getting at, huh? That is a very interesting idea. Nicholson is the only one we'd have to take into our confidence. Reese could ride out to the Nicholson Ranch as Emerson Whitby III. Me? And one of us could go along, maybe pose as his valet. And give the kidnappers every opportunity to grab him. And if they did, then uh, someone could follow. Good job for you, Joe. That's what I thought. Wait a minute. You mean you want me to let him set in this dream poker game in my place? Well, let me tell you, you I can't do this game well some other way. Well, we could track down and arrest those outlaws. But we still wouldn't know who organized the kidnapping scheme. I've traveled hundreds of miles to sit at the same poker table with Sabrina Lane. Mr. Whitby, if we hadn't intervened, you'd be in the kidnapper's hands right now. I think we've earned the right to ask for your cooperation. All right. And while he's having all the fun, what do I do? You'll check in the hotel under a different name. Till the kidnappers and the leader record, you'll stay safe in your room. Playing solitaire. I'll be guarding you, Mr. Whitby. We can play blackjack. Oh, well, now, wait a minute. <laughs> Why you? Well, it... Can't be Reese, and Joe has to track the kidnappers, and you volunteer to be Mr. Whitby's valet. Oh, uh, no. Correction. I volunteered to be Mr. Whitby's bodyguard when Mr. Whitby was still Mr. Whitby. Well, what's the matter? Don't you want to be my servant? No. Eric, get Mr. Whitby settled in the hotel. The rest of you follow through on your assignments. Mr. Whitby? Gentlemen. Oh, Reese. I'll get word to Frank Nicholson and tell him what we're up to. Uh, in the meantime... Changing to something a little more suitable. What? I ain't no millionaire. And that's something else, Captain. What am I supposed to use for money in that sky to limit poker game, huh? If I'm going to be a millionaire, I got to bet like one. I suppose I'll have to advance you some cash to make a convincing display. Arrange to be kidnapped quickly. Uh... Oh, oh, Captain. Uh... What about my winnings? What are you talking about? 
the money. I'm going to win playing poker with them millionaires. Now, is it going to be mine or the company's? The company's. Well, uh, Captain, couldn't we split it 50-50, huh? Agreed. If the same thing applies to the losses. Duh. Not excessively luxurious. It's the best in the hotel. We'll hope we don't have to stay here long. Oh, no offense, Hunter. But I came to Laredo to spend my time across the table from Sabrina Lane. Not you. I understand. We need some food. Something to drink. I'll see what I can arrange. All right, thank you, gentlemen. That'll be all. You could be only one person, Sabrina Lane. My reputation has preceded me. And failed to do you justice. Oh, well, I didn't expect to find such gallantry in Laredo. But perhaps you're a visitor, too. Are you by any chance Emerson Whitby? No. Well, unfortunately, I'm only his servant. You're a servant? Well, secretary, companion, valet. You don't look like a servant. Well, these clothes are the only remnants of happier days when I had servants. And Mr. Whitby allows me to dress as I please, as long as I do my job. I was just asking my way to the Nicholson Ranch. Oh, well, I'm arranging for transportation. I'm sure that Mr. Whitby would never forgive me if I don't insist that you're right with him. I wouldn't want to get you in trouble with your employer. You are most kind. You lost everything, huh? You're a gambler, too. And I feel that my luck is about to change. <laughs> Sherry, we'll wait for him. By all means, Miss Lane. No! Oh, no! Chad, what are you trying? What are you trying to do, anyway? I'm trying to make you look like a well-dressed San Francisco millionaire, that's what. Oh. Oh. Reese, you look about as natural in those dude clothes as a muley cow in a corset. <laughs> the, Chad, will you stop it? You're, you're supposed to be dressing me, not choking me to death. Oh. Well, whoever said clothes make the man hadn't seen you, Reese. Oh. Hey, why aren't you over with Whitby? I uh, came to get my cash reserves. I figure a few hours of blackjack with Mr. Whitby, and I'll be a wealthy man. Yeah, you'll be over there making a fortune while I'm here playing nursemaid to this churnhead. Now, now, just a minute. Chad, oh. if it is that important to you, you stay with Whitby. You trade jobs? Sure. Why? Well, because I thought that's what you wanted. I guess I was wrong. Forget it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on just a second, partner. Now, if you really mean that, and you won't change your mind. We change places now, it's final. All right. I'll stay with Whitby. Not again. <laughs> sure is pretty. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. Uh, <clears throat> if you happen to be having any problems with your accommodations here, uh, the manager's a personal friend of mine. I'd be happy to speak to him for you. Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you, Mr. Cooper, ma'am. Chad Cooper. Well, we won't be staying here, Mr. Cooper. We're going on to the Nicholson Ranch tonight. Is this man annoying you, Miss Lane? No, I think he means well. You're too kind. The management should do something about these lobby lizards. Lobby lizards? Now move along, please. Smile, Chad. You got what you wanted. <laughs> Mr. Whitby would be delighted. Oh, that's very kind. It's only about five miles, and the road isn't terribly rough. Mm, marvelous. That's Sabrina Lane. That's Sabrina Lane. You're a lucky man, Reese. 
Having a woman like that on your arm, unless, of course, Eric finds a way to trade places with you like he did with me. Well, now, there ain't nobody gonna trade places with me. Uh, <coughs> Miss Lane, allow me to present Mr. Emerson Whitby III. Well, I've been looking forward to this meeting for a long time, ma'am. So have I, but I just can't believe it. Well, is there something wrong? Well, I've heard so much about you from so many different people. Naturally, I've tried to imagine what you'd be like. Or oh, you mean I what? You mean, um, not what you expected, ma'am? You're exactly the way I pictured you. It's uncanny. You couldn't possibly be anyone but Emerson Whitby. I, I couldn't, ma'am. The carriage is waiting, sir, shall we? Uh-oh, you help the maid with the luggage. I'll take care of Miss Lane. Mr. Whitby? Miss Lane? I'll take it. <laughs> uh, smile, partner. You got what you want. <laughs> to this. Oh, I know you, Frank. You just want to recover your losses from that London game. <laughs> Win or lose, it's always a pleasure to sit in any game with you. <laughs> and, uh, how are you, Emerson? Emerson! Oh, oh, oh! Oh, oh, oh! Hi there. You know, it's real good to see you, Mr. Nicholson. Real good to see you. Mr. Nicholson? Why so formal? Hasn't it always been Frank and Emerson? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Emerson. Uh, I mean, Frank. <laughs> I do believe you flustered him, Sabrina. <laughs> oh, she asked for a fact. Virgil and Harry are here, anxious to get the game started. Jinx, will you take Miss Lane's luggage into the West Room? Well, my man here will take care of my luggage. Up to it, fella. Up to it. Frank, would you excuse me a moment? I want to check my luggage. Certainly. Would you hold this for me, please? Your orders were no killing. Everything went wrong. Grubs talked. The Rangers almost got us. Well, you'll get another chance here. When? In the morning. Emerson, darling, shall we start with draw or five card stud? With you in the game, anything's all right with me, Sabrina. I'd settle for, for Red Dog or, or Spit in the Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> my cue to exit. I'll call you. Oh. Uh, well, um, Jackson Nines. Full house. Queen's over. <laughs> well, that's sure hard to beat. That sure is. <laughs> oh, Emerson, you almost bluffed me out of it. Oh, now, no. The way he was pushing chips in there, I thought he at least had four aces. Emerson bets like a man who's using somebody else's money. <laughs> uh, oh, oh boy. Miss Lane needs more champagne. Emerson, you're a poet. Well, I guess you just bring it out of me, Sabrina. <laughs> Your uh, hand is trembling, Miss Lane. Mm, that's the excitement of the game. <laughs> Caviar, Emerson? Well, I don't much like the taste of the stuff, but it sure gives you a powerful thirst for the champagne. <laughs> There we are. Caviar. Now, how about that, huh? Oh, boy. Fill it up. Come on. Fill it up. Your deal, Sabrina. All right, gentlemen. 
The preliminaries were amusing. Shall we now settle down to some serious poker? All right. All righty. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Hit me. Again. All right. Eighteen. Twenty. Maybe my luck would have been better with that other ranger. Well, we don't have to play anymore if you don't want to, Mr. Whitby. Mm, blackjack's better than nothing. Although not much. Aren't you bored, too? Bored? Me? No, sir. I've, I've got probably $1,500 here. Do you know how long it would take me to earn that in the Rangers? Three years. Let's raise the stakes. Anything you say, Mr. Whitby. I hope the other Emerson Whitby is having better luck than I am. Uh, aces and queens. Oh, the man is unbeatable. The luck of the Whitby's, mm, Emerson. Well, that's what they say. Lucky at cards, unlucky at love. But let's me and you prove them wrong, huh, Sabrina? Uh, black coffee, sir? Coffee, no. Champagne. Champagne for breakfast? Breakfast? You've played all night. Well... Why don't we give the cards a chance to cool off? Oh, that's an excellent idea. A bit of breakfast, a little cat nap, and then we'll be set for another eight hours. Well, I'm not the least bit tired, are you, Emerson? Not me, not at all, no. Would you like to hunt for your breakfast? Who hit it? <laughs> <laughs> You're a crack shot. The ranch is alive with quail. Why don't we each see if we can bag our own breakfast? Marvelous, Frank. I never use any gun larger than this. So count me out, Frank. Me too. I've got my sights set in at least three or four hours sleep. Well, I ain't, uh, I ain't much for this bird hunting myself. But now, big game, when it comes to... Ooh, ooh. This may be our big chance, sir. Big chance? To try out a new gun. Oh, yeah, aren't... yeah, yeah, you're right, Eric. You're right. You can count me in. Oh, I don't know what I'd do without this young fella. But if you don't stop kicking me in the shins, I'm sure going to find out. Well, it sure is a nice day for hunting. Now that's an outfit. <laughs> Thank you, Emerson. You know, instead of going out chasing birds, I'd just soon just, just stand right here and enjoy the view. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suggest that we keep about 100 yards apart. That'll reduce the chances of mistaking one another for a quail. Well, now, don't you worry. I won't fire till I see the whites of their eyes. <laughs> uh, allow me, sir. Now, when they jump, you put up just enough of a fight to make it look believable, huh? Now, don't you worry, none. Come along, my dear. Madam... Head him toward the lake. No slip-ups this time. What about the valet? Just leave him to me. Fifty dollars says I bag the first quail. You make it a hundred and it's a bet. Done. <laughs> you know, I think I want to get to like being a millionaire. It's going to take you quite a while at forty dollars a month. No. Going in the wrong direction. But I heard some birds up on that hill. And the kidnappers are more likely to be this way. But I'll lose my bet with Sabrina. Hey, 
Maybe they want to kidnap her instead of me. Yeah. Walk towards the lake. I was siding on a covey and I tripped over that log. May I? Please do. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. No, wait a minute. Fellas, my arm. Oh, fellas, you hurt my arm. No, wait a minute. Fellas, my arm. I told you not to hurt him. I didn't even touch him. Well, he must have fainted. Get him on the horse. Neither do I, and that's very uncharacteristic of Mr. Whitby. Excuse me. Oh, Mr. Whitby! Uh, Mr. Whitby! Mr. Whitby! Mr. Whitby! Where is he? He's been kidnapped. They're asking for 150,000 in ransom. Put $150,000 in small bills into a package. Drop it from Loki Pinder at 4 p.m. Thursday. Day after tomorrow. Loki Pinder? It's a cliff northwest of town. Means lovers leap in Kiowa. Fail to follow these instructions and Whitby dies. What do you intend to do? Well, first, I must wire the Whitby family lawyer in San Francisco. I'm sure that he'll authorize immediate payment of the ransom. 150000 Until Mr. Whitby is safely returned, I'm afraid our hands are tied. We certainly wouldn't want to take any action which might provoke the gang to harm Mr. Whitby. What about the other guests at Nicholson Ranch? Well, Virgil and dear Harry left. We couldn't think of resuming our game with Emerson in jeopardy. Miss Lane will be staying at the hotel. I can't leave without knowing about Emerson. We only met yesterday, but still I feel I know him so well. Keep me informed of any new developments. I certainly will, Captain. What is it, Miss Lane? Oh, uh... Oh. I was just thinking of Emerson. That poor, gentle, loving man. At the mercy of those brutal, unfeeling killers. You call that coffee? I say it's swill. And bad swill. No self-respecting hog to judge it. Now, when I ask for coffee, I want coffee. The best. Now, can't you fellas get it through your thick lords who I am? I am Emerson Whitby III, a millionaire, and I want the best of everything. Well, now, come on, more coffee, more coffee. Now, quick, and good coffee this time. Us millionaires don't like to be kept waiting. That's the only kind of coffee we got. Well, maybe you fixed it wrong. I fixed it the same as always. Well, that's probably what's wrong, because I just ain't anybody, you know. I'm something special. 
And so you got a cook special for me, that's all. Now try it again, my man. Try it again. Yeah, you try it. Go, oh, you. You. Help me with this boot, will you? Go. Oh. Come on. The boot. Well, come on. Put some muscle in it, will you? <laughs> Now, come on, get up. Try it again. Remember our orders. $150,000. Just keep saying it over and over to yourself. $150,000. Be worth that much money to put my fist just once. That big, loud monster. Uh-oh. Remember what the man said. Just keep thinking. $150,000. Uh, uh, uh. What's the matter? You've got the wrong man. Wrong man? I'm smothered in here. Get something to fan me with. That's not Whitby. But the voice. Voice is right. But the man is wrong. This is a ranger. They figured a trap us. I'm waiting. A ranger? Hold it. Our orders are not to kill him. Hurry up. What are you doing out there? Rent. Get the horses. I'm sorry to trouble you. Uh, yes, Miss Lane. Uh, but yesterday afternoon, there was a gentleman checked into this hotel about the same time I arrived by stage from Austin. Uh, yesterday afternoon? Uh, that, would, uh, that would be Mr. Smith. Oh, yes. Well, he had several pieces of luggage, and so did I. And I've misplaced one of my small cases. I thought, well, perhaps he might have taken it by mistake. Uh, would you like for me to check with him, Miss Lane? Oh, I don't mind asking him. <laughs> what room did you say he was in? Uh, uh, Eleven. Uh, right down the hall from your room. Thank you so much. <laughs> Once more. Uh, that's too much. I'm busted again. Too bad. Well, another IOU, I guess. What does that make it? About 1,200? Closer to 1,600. I think I was 1,500 ahead. That was yesterday. Who is it? Who's that? Yeah. Better let me get it. Nobody there. Someone just knocked at the wrong door. Let's play. Deal. so undignified if, uh, if they hadn't found out they got the wrong fella. Yeah, you go. I'll tell you right now. 
See, my problem is that uh, Captain Parmalee well, just didn't tell me what to do in a case like this. Well, they hit it for Laredo, didn't they? Yeah. So I guess the best thing for me to do, Reese, is uh, just follow him, huh? Reese, the one thing I cannot stand is to hear a grown man cry. You're not helping things by making yourself all purple like that. When you pull on those ropes, you just make the knots tighter. All right. I'm going to cut you loose. But when I take off that bandana, all I want to hear out of you is a nice, polite thank you, Joe. Joe, I'm telling you right now. Thank you, Joe? Yeah. That's the boy. Well, cut me out of here, will you? What's the matter with you, Joe? Why'd you take so long? Now, get me out of here. This could go on indefinitely. Any reason why it shouldn't? I'm tempted. But I have to dress for dinner. Who's taking you to dinner? You are. Food doesn't interest me. Mm, I know. Dedicated employee that you are, your only concern is with poor Mr. Whitby's welfare. But I have to see you keep your strength up. Well, if you insist. I do. Give me an hour. Not one minute more. Mrs. Lane. Oh, yeah, that'd be room number eight, right up the stairs. Nineteen. Twenty. Looks like your luck's changing. It's about time. Do you smell something? It's all right, folks, just some burning rags. Come on back to the room. Sir, you put this trunk in the wrong room. I think, I think that'll take care of it. You can go back to your room, sir. Oh, all right? Oh, Mr. Cooper, thank goodness you were here to take charge. Oh, I'm just glad I, I could have uh, given you some help. I, I thought you were staying at the Nicholson Ranch. Oh, I was. But a terrible thing happened there this morning. What? One of the visitors, Mr. Whitby... Yes? ...was kidnapped. You don't say. you again, Mr. Cooper. Oh, yeah. you're quite welcome, and I don't feel that you need an emergency in order to call on me again. I'll remember that.
drive back to the room Whitby was gone, I found this note. Because of your trickery, our price is now $200,000. And unless you wish to be responsible for Emerson Whitby's death, contact his lawyer in San Francisco immediately and arrange for the ransom. Time is running out. Well, Hunter? It seems we have caught in the wrong trap, Captain. Well, it's my fault, too, Captain. I shouldn't have let Whitby alone. Oh, but you had to rescue a lady in distress. Well, who'd figure a woman like Sabrina Lane would be mixed up in a kidnapping plot? I can think of 200,000 good reasons. She may well be the organizer, but we can't prove it. If the accuser now, she'll simply deny it. Then we'll be putting her on a guard. Uh, somehow we have to tie her in directly, either with the men she's hired or with the ransom money. Yeah, and if we don't find Whitby, we have to pay that money tomorrow. Paying the ransom money doesn't mean they won't kill Whitby. Now, you're sure he's not hidden in the hotel? No, Captain. We search it from the top to the bottom. He could be miles from here by now. And Whitby's not the only one missing. Where's Reese and Joe? Try anything, Whitby. We'll put you back in the trunk. If you just take me back to Laredo, I'm sure we could work out a satisfactory financial settlement for all of you. We're staying right here. And two hundred thousand dollars is satisfactory enough for us. But suppose there's a delay in the money from San Francisco. Let's hope for your sake there ain't. You wouldn't kill me, would you? If you did that, you'd never get your money. And who is going to know you're dead? They won't find out till after we have the cash. Ah, uh, quit scaring him. He's a pretty nice fella. Nothing like that other one. Yeah. Killing him would be a real pleasure. Someday him and me are going to meet up again. And when we do... Ah! Hiya, Whitby. Nice to see you again. Oh, it's very nice to see you, gentlemen. Well, it seems lately I spent most of my time thanking you gentlemen for saving my life. Well, these fellows here, they don't never know when to give up. They didn't hurt you, did they, Mr. Whitby? Only my dignity. After being jammed in there, it'll take a month to get this crick out of my back. Two voices like that. It just don't seem reasonable. <laughs> you still want me to stay out of sight? Well, after four o'clock. Why? You have the kidnappers. We could have arrested those three at any time. They didn't plan the kidnapping. That's right. They were just taking orders. From Jenks. Nicholson Straubach. Arrest Jenks and that's the end of it. We want to see who shows up at Lover's Leap this afternoon to collect this. You play your games if you like. I want to be on the next stage out of Laredo. If you're seen, that will finish it. We're just asking for a few more hours of cooperation. The last time I cooperated, I was carted away in a trunk. Well, this time you'll stay in a barracks. Riley, guard Mr. Whitby. Right, Kim. All right. What'll it be, Blackjack? It's agreeable to me, sir. Well, one must be flexible. <laughs> Poor Jenks down there is going to be so disappointed. He might even be hurt enough to go to the law and name names. Well, I have a little surprise planned for him later. What about me? 
I've enjoyed knowing you. But all good things must end. A fatal accident? In the great Kiowa tradition. First, give me the money. Elvis, I suppose they jump together, not separately. I wouldn't dream of going unless you go with me. It was only in newspapers. Hold it up. You ain't gonna like what you find in there. And even if it was money, you couldn't spend it where you're going. Now come on, move. Move! You're a lawman. A ranger. And I presume you're painfully incorruptible. It's in my nature. Shall we go? One last appeal to your gambling instincts. High card decides. You win, I go to jail. I win, you turn around, I walk away. My instincts tell me there's no gamble. But try it on the judge and jury, Sabrina. They may not notice the ace up your sleeve. Hey, fellas, how about some poker, huh? with me. Do it. All right, but no blackjack. Of course, it's going to seem like pretty small potatoes to me after that game I was in. Uh, no caviar and champagne. Hey, you know that, that Mr. Whitby, for a millionaire, he was a right nice fella. Well, you know, he was going to give us all a bonus, but the captain kept telling him we wouldn't even think about it. You know, I'll tell you something else about Mr. Whitby. He had almost $1,800 in my IOUs. And like the generous gentleman he is, he left town without even trying to collect. Eighteen hundred? Eighteen hundred dollars. Can you imagine me trying to pay off eighteen hundred dollars? How are you going to do that, Chad? I just told you, Joe, I don't have to do it because the man must have torn up the IOUs. Ah, he didn't tear them up. What do you mean? You he lost them to me. Lost them to you, Joe! Eighteen hundred big ones, Chad. Looks like I'm going to be into your payroll check for a long time. Oh, Joe, you can't hold me to that. <laughs> just try it. Joe! <laughs> 